Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are getting into the chapter two, which will be about mobile application test types. And this chapter will be broken down into three different segments. 2.1, testing for compatibility with device hardwares. 2.2, testing for app interaction with device softwares. And 2.3, testing for various connectivity methods. As a part of this tutorial, we are getting started with 2.1, but as it is quite long, we have broken that into three different parts for making you understand every concept in a much detailed way. So getting started with 2.1, testing for compatibility with device hardware, and this is the part one of it. The very first thing to talk about is testing for device features. Now, when it comes to mobile application testing, of course, the mobile app has to interact with the available features within the phone and at the same time we need to agree that every single device has different features as a part of it not all the devices comes with all the features which you can actually have in one phone today but we need to make sure that when our target users are making use of it they have the comfort of using it even if they don't have any of the features as a part of their device so most importantly just we discussed as a part of the chapter one First of all, get the devices which you will be testing in. And for that, you can definitely do a market prioritization, which will help you to understand that what devices are commonly being used. And it can definitely help you to reduce the number of devices which you need in order to target the app testing. So different device, uh, different types of devices with differing capabilities means that compatibility testing has to be conducted on a large number of devices. This requires prioritization of target devices for testing. Now for prioritization, market data is used to select to device portfolio most appropriate for the target market. So this is how you can actually reduce your cost and cut your cost on selecting the mobile devices for testing. The device portfolio selection usually is a compromise between the market coverage, cost and the risk. So you do consider a lot many other factors including the market coverage, what people are generally using as a device type, second the cost involved in doing that and if there are any specific risk items to be addressed for any particular device type. Now mainly this particular type of test or the test type is to address the in interaction with the mobile features. Now application can be installed on different types of devices with following features which are generally observed including different methods for switching off. Sometimes you do have a touch feature to do that or you have a power button to switch off the phone. Different ways to navigate to the app. Uh, use of hard and soft keyboards. If you're talking about your basic devices, they come with hard keyboards. And uh, if you talk about the smartphones, you have soft keyboard. Other hardwares included in that is radio, USB, uh, Bluetooth, camera, speakers, microphone, headphone access. So we just want to make sure that if people are having these kind of uh, features embedded within their device, then how does my app react to it? Further to add on the same note, device features may have further variations, like they may have different versions, different sizes, and different capabilities. For example, if I talk about USB, you have 2.0, 3.0, and so on, and audio jack has been further you know, uh, modified to go in air, so you don't really see uh, the new devices having an audio jack, and a lot many other things. So devices features may have many variations and can differ even between the different device models made by the same manufacturer. So they are commonly used to differentiate between the market segment and can change quickly over time. So you know that, you know, for example, if you're talking about one of the example there, initially, if you see, uh, down the line, you know, you know, just a few years ago, not all the phones used to have a finger sensor. Now, currently, if you talk about any phone which you pick it up, will have a finger sensor inbuilt in that. So, as you see, maybe going uh, down the line for two years from now, uh, there will be no such phone which doesn't have a fingerprint sensor at all, right? So, every phone will have a fingerprint sensor or every phone will have three cameras at least. So, things have been changing over time. Now, due to this changeability, the tester needs a clear understanding of the devices and the features expected by its users. The tester now needs to create the device portfolio and design corresponding tests to measure them accordingly. 
Now, generally, it is not enough to test if the application works correctly with the expected feature. More importantly, it is required to test the app still works as expected if certain feature is absent. For example, I may have created an app to interact with your camera, but what if somebody or like, you know, again, dual camera, rare camera and all those views, right? You can shrink fit bigger pictures and put it together. So this could be many possibilities there. So what we are talking about here is, for example, what if a phone which is using your app or device, which does not have a front camera in it, or maybe has a real camera, but not the dual camera or not the triple camera or not the quad camera, does your app still behaves the same and user is able to use it or not? The next thing to talk about from this segment is testing for different types of displays. Of course, you do understand that different devices comes with different screen sizes, and I wanna make sure that the system works fine, the app works fine in any sort of these device uh, display sizes, irrespective of that. Because generally, people find a lot of difficulties if the app is not fitting into the different screen sizes. And what if you have created an app to fit the uh, bigger screens and when it is installed on a phone with a smaller screen, a lot of things can overlap, a lot of things cannot be accessible as it will be out of the screen and a lot many other problems can happen. So device displays can have various screen sizes, viewport sizes, aspect ratio, resolution, measured in pixels per inches, that is PPI, and dots per inches, which is DPI. Device fragmentation further requires prioritization to be performed again to do such testing. Tests should be created that exercise the user interface on various devices with different screen sizes, resolutions, and aspect ratio for the most common in the target market. Now generally, what sort of issues you can face with the related to display is listed here. That testing for different displays need to be carried out to check the following which includes the app, scales, all user interface elements according to the current screen density and size. User interface elements, uh, uh, elements do not overlap. It could be possible that when you uh, shrink fit the text app size on the screen basis, then text may overlap and may not be accessible to the user. Usability or touch issues do not occur. You, these there is no problematic shrinkage of images because of high DPI or PPI. Sometimes it happens that you know resolution reduces on the images in order to fit into the right screen. Further to add, uh, talking about the device temperature, you have observed that you know sometimes when you use certain apps, it heats up your phone and adds um, you know the temperature value to higher and people really opt out for such apps and that's where a mobile tester again need to take the device temperature into consideration when testing any of the apps now unlike desktop computers mobile devices react differently to increase in device temperature mobile devices could get overheated for a variety of reasons such as battery charging intense workload apps running in the background continuous usage of cellular data wi-fi or gps overheating can impact the device as it attempts to reduce the heating and conserve the battery levels this may include a drop in the cpu frequency and or the freeing up of memory and turning off parts of the system so sometimes it happens like you know generally it will cut off your some of the components automatically that just because your device temperature is too high you cannot make a call or just because your device temperature is too high you cannot use a camera to make a photo or maybe a video so you know that can really turn off your app as well so if this happens it can also impact the app functionality and therefore must be considered when planning the test for such things test must be designed to consume a lot of energy which leads to the generation of heat over a long uninterrupted period of the time this will justify the software in the test and has no unexpected behavior so just try to make sure that if your app is being used regularly for a continuous period of time and by applying a lot of load on the system or the devices being used you should not be facing any technical issues with the app interaction which justifies at the same time that it is not increasing the temperature or even if the temperature is increased, it does not impact the app functionality. Well, putting up all together, uh, this is just the part one and we have discussed about a lot of things here and we will be covering that in the other upcoming tutorials as well. So stay tuned for that. 
Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.